Which you guys got another video here for you on how to fix no beep codes, no post or no input to the monitor screen on a new build like this. Now, a lot of people always complain in the comment section saying, why didn't you show any benchmarks and stuff like that? And that's because this PC, when I built it, was not working. You can see it's powering on and it's spinning up and then stopping just like this. So we need to troubleshoot this and I'm going to show you how I troubleshoot uh, problems with computers. I've been doing this for a very, very long time and I'm going to show you the best way to troubleshoot issues just like this one. Now, if I hold the power button in on the case, you'll see the RGB actually comes on, but then it switches itself off and uh, you can see it's now completely shut down. So what's happening with the computer? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at it. What I'm going to do is take it all outside of the case, just in case there's an issue with the case. And what we'll do is we'll bypass that switch to see whether it powers on. So we're still using all the same components. We haven't changed anything just yet, but I'll quickly touch the uh, power button here with a screwdriver and this should spin up and we should see uh, the light going on and coming off. This is the diagnostic light here and these normally refer to your DRAM or VGA or CPU or boot and things like that. And you can check the manufacturer's website and it will tell you exactly what these lights mean and what they are indicating when you're booting up. Now, it's not as simple as that, but it just gives you a head start on knowing exactly what's going on with the system. Now, some of the higher end boards will have this included on them, but some of the budget boards don't have the diagnostic LED lights on them. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take off all of the power connections to the board and we'll try and use another power supply just to bypass the power supply here just to see whether it's a power supply issue that is causing the problem. What you need to do is you need to troubleshoot and diagnose all of the components to find out whether one of these components is failing or causing an issue. So I've got a brand new power supply here and I'm going to give it some power and we'll plug this into the motherboard and see whether it acts in a different way. If it does and we get post, then it was probably the power supply. It's that simple. So we've got the CPU and the 24 pin here. I'm going to plug these into the motherboard. Now, where a lot of people have trouble is they don't have parts to swap out. And if that is the case, you're just going to be banging your head against the wall and causing yourself a load of trouble trying to troubleshoot things like this. So as a PC repair tech, you're going to always have this sort of stuff in the workshop so you can quickly test stuff very quickly. So let me go ahead and power this on and we will then touch the pins for startup. Now, I haven't got the HDMI cable in yet, so let me go ahead and do that. And we'll put this into the onboard graphics because this is an 8700G and we'll be using that as our display. Now, I've already got an, an idea of what is going on with the system, uh, and I want to show you guys how we can troubleshoot it. So let's go ahead and touch these two pins here. And this is the power on switch here. So we're going to power it on, and I have to hold it on here. It goes on, and it switches off. And that did spin up a little bit, and then it switched off. So we have problems here. Now, I've already flashed a BIOS to make sure we have the latest BIOS so it accepts this processor. So what we're going to do next is we are going to remove uh, the RAM and change the RAM around. Also, what we're going to do is remove that SSD inside there or NVMe drive. So let's go ahead and remove the RAM first. Now, I have another computer with a known good stick of RAM, but if you don't and you have just the sticks of RAM that you have, then you may want to go down to just one stick of RAM and try the same thing again. If that fails, then move that RAM stick to another slot and try again. And then if that doesn't work, you can then try the other stick of RAM and do the same process. But again, with using the same RAM, if the RAM is not compatible or the RAM is faulty, or the slot on the motherboard is faulty, you're never going to know by just using the same RAM. Now, of course, it goes without saying you should also check the manufacturer's website of that motherboard to make sure the RAM that you are using is compatible with that board. If it's not, then that might be the reason why it's not working. So it's always best to head over to the website and check the exact brand number and the model number to make sure that it is compatible with your hardware.
And once you've done that, you can then use a known good sticker RAM that does work with that board. And that way you'll be able to test it. So I do have a stick here, which I'm going to use. And it is a good working stick and it has worked in this motherboard before. So I know it does work. And this will be our test to make sure the RAM is working correctly. Now, if we have the same problem with that sticker RAM that I'm going to be putting in here, then obviously it's not a RAM related issue. So let's go ahead and slot this into the board and hopefully uh, the problem goes away. If it doesn't, then we move on to the next component and test that. Now, people talk about memtest and other types of ways of testing things. These are a long uh, process and they take a very long time to troubleshoot uh, issues with your computer. This is the most easiest tried and trusted way of testing for problems. So I'm going to quickly touch this here and you can see it goes on and it goes off. And that means the RAM that is known good is now not working. I can see the LED light on the board going on and going off. The fans spin up and it switches off. So let's go ahead and uh, try something else here because obviously this is not working. And now we know that it's not a RAM related issue. So I'm going to unplug this and take this out now. You can go ahead and change the RAM slot as well to make sure the slot on the board is not faulty. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, test this out. I'm going to clear the CMOS here as well, which is a CMOS clip here. So let me go ahead and clear the CMOS. I'm going to shorten these two pins out and take the power out and hold this for 30 seconds. Now, like I said, I've already flashed the BIOS to make sure the BIOS is the very latest BIOS that supports that CPU. So I know that's not the issue as well. So basically what I've done here is I've cleaned the CMOS and it's still not working and we're still having no post. So let me go ahead and remove the drive from the motherboard here. It's this NVMe drive here. I just want to remove this. I don't think this is the issue, but I just like to isolate everything to make sure this is not causing an issue. So, um, you know, so let's go ahead and remove this little uh, heat sink here and remove the actual drive here. And we can then remove the drive and I can then try to uh, boot the system up again to see what happens here. And you can see it's doing exactly the same thing. It's powering on and powering straight off. So now we're down to the motherboard and the CPU. So one of these two it doesn't like. So let me go ahead and swap this out here. So we need to get this cooler off because it's either the CPU or the motherboard or both. Now I have used this motherboard before and, uh, but things can go wrong in storage and things like that. So you just need to check. Now this is the problem that a lot of people are going to have. How would you check the CPU and how would you check the motherboard? Well, obviously you pick the cheapest part first and then try to swap it out. You can buy a cheap motherboard and quickly put that CPU in there and see whether it works. Now, of course, there is always a risk when you're putting a broken hardware into brand new hardware because it could short that board and break the board again. But it's very unlikely, but it is possibility. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the CPU cooler here. Now, you may be wondering, how can you test at home uh, whether the CPU is bad or the motherboard is bad. Well, obviously, you're going to need another motherboard. And again, you can buy cheap uh, motherboards. Now, at the moment, DDR5 motherboards are pretty expensive, but you can buy a, a real cheap version of one as, and try to see whether that resolves the issue because obviously you're going to need to know what it is because this is a brand new uh, CPU. But I'm just going to try this other slot here to make sure the slot on the board is not bad. And we'll quickly try this and see whether this powers on. I don't think it is the slot on the board, but we'll just do it and just see. I'm just going to rest this on top here. And this should be quick enough to see whether it uh, works or not. So I'm going to quickly power this on, put the power in. And I could put the fan uh, cable back in there if I want to. But I'll just use it as an heat sink and power on to see whether it shuts straight off. So let me go ahead and power it on. Probably help if I put the power back on. There we go. And it just switches straight off. So it's not uh, that slot on the board either. So let me go ahead and remove uh, the RAM. And we're going to remove the CPU. And I'll try it on a brand new board that I purchased 
just to see whether it is actually the CPU. I think it's the CPU. And uh, the 8700G has had a few issues which I've been looking uh, on the internet. There has been a few people that have had issues with the 8700G. And if that is the case, then I can't send this back to Amazon because obviously it's gone past the 30 days because I didn't build it straight away. But I can RMA this to AMD because there is obviously uh, something wrong with the chip if it doesn't work in this new board, which I'm going to test right now. Now, I also looked at all of the pins. You can get yourself a light and also you can get yourself a magnifying glass if you need one and have a look at all the pins. The pins look perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with the pins on the board. They're not bent. They're not missing and everything is working fine. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get myself a new board and test with that board. Now, for all those wondering, I did actually try this 1030 in the GPU slot here to take the GPU off of the uh, APU that's in the slot there. But unfortunately, it still didn't work. So even the GPU here is not giving me post. So I did want to try that, but I will try that on the new board as well, just to show you. Uh, what you can try but these are pretty cheap so if you're doing pc repair having a cheap uh, gpu is very important to have to bypass things so let's go ahead and try this board here which i picked up now you can get a cheaper board than this this is around about 140 something pounds and uh, you can get the cheaper version of this which is around about 100 pounds but i went with the one with the better cooling on it and uh, just in case i can use this in another build at a later date so let's go ahead and put the 24 pin in and the CPU straight into the motherboard as well. And I'm going to carry on using the brand new power supply here as well, just to make sure everything is working OK. And what we need to do here now is I need to uh, remove these brackets on here so I can mount the CPU cooler on here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let me just quickly put the HDMI cable in here as well. Now, also, there is a DP cable here. If you wanted to use the DP cable, you can do, but I'm using the HDMI one. There is one there. I plugged that in the wrong slot. There we go. That's now in. And uh, basically, what we need to do now is just do exactly the same on this, and this will tell us whether the motherboard is gone or whether it's the CPU gone or both, because this is a brand new uh, motherboard, and it's unlikely that it's going to do exactly the same thing on a brand new board. So let me go ahead and remove the retention lever here and lift up this little cage. And I've examined the pins on the board and the and the pins are perfectly fine. So let me go ahead and get that uh, CPU and put it in the slot. So I've saved you the boring part of me putting everything back together again. And we've got everything uh, plugged in here. All I need to do is tighten this down. And then once we've tightened this down, we can then... Uh, basically put a, a RAM stick in, which I'm going to do right here, and then we can move on. So let's go ahead and tighten this down. And now all I need to do here now is put a memory stick in. So I'm going to go ahead and put the memory in here. And we can then test it and see whether this uh, does the same thing. So let me clip this into position. I'm only going to use one stick here, and we'll go ahead and power this up. So let me go ahead and power this up. And I'll also try the other stick, but this should go OK here. So let me go ahead and power this on. And we'll get our screwdriver and we'll shorten these pins out and see what happens. So let's go ahead and touch the two pins here for the power button and shorten this out. And we are now getting power. And the lights come on, the RGB comes on, the fan's spinning, and also the fan on the power supply is spinning. But it's... Uh, it's just spinning. It is not going off. So that's a good sign. But let's just give it a bit of time and see if we get post here and see if we get post on the screen. And I'm not seeing no action here as of yet on the screen. But also to remember is there is no LED diagnostic lights on here. So I've now tried it again. I've got the uh, GPU in here. We didn't get post on the last one. So I've put a GPU in. And it's doing the same thing. I've got two RAM sticks in there now. And it's powering on, but it's not giving me display. And uh, I've tried that, and I've tried clearing the CMOS, and it's not working. So we're still not getting any display or any post. 
and even with this GPU in here, but it is now actually powering on and you're just seeing it spinning up here like that. So it's more likely uh, that we've got some sort of problem with the uh, CPU here as well. So what I'm going to do is we didn't get the uh, power staying on on the last motherboard, but it's definitely uh, causing a problem with this CPU. So it's probably a bad CPU that is causing the issue. And it could possibly be the motherboard is now bad on that other system that I tried. So let me go ahead and uh, try one more thing here. I'm going to put a post speaker in here. I've also put in there also a, another sticker RAM here. It's powering on, but we're not getting any beeps at all so it's not posting and we're not getting in that initial beep that we like to get so it's not working so i do think that is a bad cpu and that's basically how you can troubleshoot your pc hardware if you're not getting any sort of post or any display or any beeps on the board this is basically how you can troubleshoot all of your hardware to find out what piece of hardware is fouled i will be rma in this actual CPU to try and get a replacement or a refund and uh, we'll then test it on that other board again when it comes it may be the fact that the board is also failed but this one is definitely not posting it's not beeping and that tells me that the CPU is bad anyway my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk I hope you enjoy this content if you do then give it a thumbs up and also leave a comment it does help with the YouTube algorithm just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next video. Bye for now.